Good morning. Let's begin our service this morning by singing hymn number 382. What is thy birthright, man, child of the perfect one? What is thy father's plan for his beloved son? Hymn number 382. scriptural this morning will be given by Carol from New Jersey. Psalms. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, and the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. We will have a moment of silent prayer and then follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
Mother God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love over all and all. Let us sing hymn number 202. <clears throat> o dreamer, leave thy dreams for joyful waking. O captive, rise and sing, for thou art free. The Christ is here, all dreams of error breaking unloosing bonds of all captivity. Hymn number 202.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We are a worldwide congregation and we maintain a very active website, plainfieldcs.com. We conduct a service every Sunday morning beginning at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion and we have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website, on YouTube, or on your telephone through a teleconference service we provide. Also on Sundays at 11 a.m. we have a Sunday school for children of all ages. And that class is also conducted by a teleconference. So if you don't live in the area and you have a child who would like to attend a Christian Science Sunday School, please contact the church and find out how he or she can participate. We will have another Bible study class next Saturday at 10 a.m. Check out the website for the study questions for that class. And we will have a meeting, a corporate meeting of the members of the church Thursday, May 21st at 8 p.m. All members, of course, are welcome to visit Plainfield and join us. But if you can't do that, that meeting will be conducted by a teleconference so that all members may attend. That's not this coming Thursday, but a week from this Thursday, May 21st. Everyone is welcome here, including all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And we will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health which attests to the healing power obtained from reading the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Lillian from New Jersey. Spinal trouble and indigestion healed. For many years, I have relied wholly upon Christian science for healing, and I am glad to acknowledge the spiritual help and many other benefits received from following its teachings. I have great cause to be grateful to God and to our revered leader, Mrs. Eddy, for these blessings, which her discovery and love for humanity made possible. I had read but a few pages in our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, when I saw that it was the truth and that it contained something I had thought could never be found in this existence. Proofs of healing came immediately, and I was able to do much useful work without a sense of burden or fatigue. As time went on, I learned the nothingness of discouragement and understood in a measure that God is my life and that all action is in divine mind. I was healed of spinal trouble and nervousness and weakness faded away and were replaced by health and strength. A larger sense of joy and gratitude did much towards overcoming indigestion, which had caused suffering for a number of years. A sprained ankle was cured in a few hours by applying what I understood of Christian science and by holding steadfastly to the statement our leader makes on page 384 of Science and Health that, quote, God never punishes man for doing right, for honest labor, or for deeds of kindness, unquote. The following day, I walked two miles with no sense of discomfort. Beliefs of heredity and lack have been overcome, and self-will, self-love, and pride are less in evidence. Miss G.W. Brookline, Massachusetts.
The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 12 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Adam and Fallen Man. Golden text, Matthew. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Christ Jesus. The responsive reading is from Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Fairly from Maryland will read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Genesis 1, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Genesis 2. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not 
surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Mark, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Matthew. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shew John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. And ye shall find rest 
unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Romans. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. First Corinthians. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ, shall all be made alive. The correlative readings will be given by Florence from Georgia. I will now read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. Man and woman as coexistent and eternal with God forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite Father-Mother God. All things are created spiritually. Mind, not matter, is the creator. Love, the divine principle, is the father and mother of the universe, including man. In divine science, man is the true image of God. The divine nature was best expressed in Christ Jesus, who threw upon mortals the truer reflection of God and lifted their lives higher than their poor thought models would allow. Thoughts which presented man as fallen, sick, sinning, and dying. The Christ-like understanding of scientific being and divine healing includes a perfect principle and idea, perfect God and perfect man as the basis of thought and demonstration. God pronounced good all that he created, and the scriptures declare that he created all. The tree of life stands for the idea of truth, and the sword which guards it is the type of divine science. The tree of knowledge stands for the erroneous doctrine that the knowledge of evil is as real, hence as God bestowed, as the knowledge of good. Was evil instituted through God love? Did he create this fruit bearer of sin in contradiction of the first creation? The second biblical account is a picture of error throughout. Jehovah declared the ground was accursed and from this ground or matter sprang Adam, notwithstanding God had blessed the earth for man's sake. From this it follows that Adam was not the ideal man for whom the earth was blessed. The ideal man was revealed in due time and was known as Christ Jesus. The name Adam represents the false supposition that life is not eternal, but has beginning and end, that the infinite enters the finite, 
that intelligence passes into non-intelligence and that soul dwells in material sense. The parent of all human discord was the Adam dream, the deep sleep, in which originated the delusion that life and intelligence proceeded from and passed into matter. This pantheistic error, or so-called serpent, insists still upon the opposite of truth, saying, Ye shall be as gods, that is, I will make error as real and eternal as truth. Whence comes a talking, lying serpent to tempt the children of divine love? The serpent enters into the metaphor only as evil. We have nothing in the animal kingdom which represents the species described, a talking serpent, and should rejoice that evil by whatever figure presented, contradicts itself and has neither origin nor support in truth and good. Seeing this, we should have faith to fight all claims of evil because we know that they are worthless and unreal. This myth represents error as always asserting its superiority over truth giving the lie to divine science and saying, through the material senses, I can open your eyes. I can do what God has not done for you. Bow down to me and have another God. Only admit that I am real, that sin and sense are more pleasant to the eyes than spiritual life, more to be desired than truth and I shall know you, and you will be mine. Thus spirit and flesh war. The history of error is a dream narrative. The dream has no reality, no intelligence, no mind. Therefore, the dreamer and dream are one, for neither is true nor real. All human knowledge and material sense must be gained from the five corporeal senses. Is this knowledge safe when eating its first fruits brought death? In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die, was the prediction in the story under consideration. If you are too material to love the science of mind, and are satisfied with good words instead of effects, if you adhere to error and are afraid to trust truth, the question then recurs, Adam, where art thou? Consciousness, where art thou? Art thou dwelling in the belief that mind is in matter and that evil is mind? Or art thou in the living faith that there is and can be but one God and keeping his commandment? Until the lesson is learned that God is the only mind governing man, mortal belief will be afraid as it was in the beginning and will hide from the demand, Where art thou? This awful demand Adam, where art thou, is met by the admission from the head, heart, stomach, blood, nerves, etc. Lo, here I am, looking for happiness and life in the body, but finding only an illusion, a blending of false claims, false pleasure, pain, sin, sickness and death. The standard of perfection was originally God and man. Has God taken down his own standard and has man fallen? Man is the expression of God's being. 
If there ever was a moment when man did not express the divine perfection, then there was a moment when man did not express God, and consequently a time when deity was unexpressed, that is, without entity. If man has lost perfection, then he has lost his perfect principle, the divine mind. If man ever existed without this perfect principle or mind, then man's existence was a myth. The relations of God and man, divine principle and idea, are indestructible in science. And science knows no lapse from nor return to harmony, but holds the divine order or spiritual law in which God and all that he creates are perfect and eternal, to have remained unchanged in its eternal history. Learn this, O mortal, and earnestly seek the spiritual status of man, which is outside of all material selfhood. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let us sing hymn number six. Abide not in the realm of dreams, O man, however fair it seems, but with clear eye the present scan and hear the call of God and man. Hymn number six.
I just started living. I found me a brand new life. It's changed my direction. Washed away all my strife. I'm a newborn believer. It's wholly fulfilling. My loads are getting lighter. My days are getting brighter. I've just started living. If I had hope only in this world below, I'd be covered with trouble. There'd be no place to go. But when I've just started living. I've found me a brand new life. It changed my direction. Changed my direction. Washed away all my strife. I'm a newborn believer. A newborn believer. It's wholly fulfilling. It's wholly fulfilling. My loads are getting lighter. My days are getting brighter. I've just started me funny you old prophets a do see I ain't one bit discouraged no I'm feeling no blue cause I've got the spirit and it's totally thrilling I've given up on counting I got no time for doubting I just started living Wash away all your strife You'll be a believer It's wholly fulfilling My loads are getting lighter My days are getting brighter I've just started living Let's sing hymn number 401. Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight, hear us, we humbly pray. And where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Hymn number 401.
I will read from the textbook of science. I will read from the textbook of Christian science, the scientific statement of being, and the correlative passage from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.